Okay, so uh, while people are coming back slowly, uh, let me introduce uh, um, the speaker. So we are happy to have uh, Matteo Politron from um, INFN Frascati. And uh, he has been working in LHC more than a decade now. So I think it's since uh, 2010. And uh, where uh, he was also Mion project leader during 2016 to 18, and also national representative uh, for the LHCB collaboration uh, from the uh, from the Italian side from 2019 to 2020. Uh, now, since uh, July 2020, he is uh, the deputy spokesperson for the LHCB experiment, and uh, I would uh, now. I uh, request uh, Matteo to take it over. And I will just, Matteo, I will just uh, look at the chat box. Quite often the students, uh, they put the comments in the chat box. In case, uh, in case uh, there is some questions, uh, if you kindly allow me, maybe I'll just, uh, uh, I'll just uh, read it out. Otherwise we can go over it to our saying. Okay, many thanks. Do you see my slides in full screen? Yes, yes. Okay, so many thanks for the nice introduction and uh, for the invitation. And uh, it's a pleasure for me today to present, uh, make a brief overview about the upgrades of the LCB uh, experiments. So, um, uh, of course, um, this has been, I think, widely discussed in the past days, the approach uh, we pursue with Flavor Physics uh, uh, to, to possibly unveil uh, effect uh, beyond the standard model is related to uh, the increase uh, of precision in the measurement uh, we do, which will uh, eventually allow to probe mass scales not accessible directly at uh, the ac um, accelerator energy in LEC in our case. And this, of course, will require huge statistics since the, the energy scale that can be probed goes like the, the, the integrated luminosity to the one-fold power and, and a strict control of the systematic uncertainties, which means having a, an excellent detector and, and, and a clever, clever design. But also we compare with standard model predictions, so we need either clean observables and the lepton frame universality ratio are one of these examples, calculable uh, drone contribution uh, and lattice QCD is paving the way here and, and uh, and possibly choosing also null test uh, of the standard model. Okay, the, the, since a decade, uh, the, the LAC demonstrated to be a fantastic, uh, not only a discovery machine at IPT, but also a fantastic flavor uh, machine uh, since uh, uh, it provides some precedent statistics uh, uh, of, of uh, C and B flavored hadrons. It, it allows to access all the hadron species. Of course, this comes with the, with the, with the experimental challenges and particularly the, the topology of the events to be reconstructed is extremely difficult. So we need excellent tracking, PID, and capability, especially to trigger with low transfer moment. And this is, uh, these are the peculiar features of, of uh, LACB. So uh, the, the future plans, of course, build on the success of the experiment during the, the past two runs. And I don't want to go through, through the highlights uh, in detail, uh, only a, a few of them. So there were results which uh, were, I mean, uh, gold uh, channels, uh, the design uh, phase of the experiment, like the SMU, which in fact was discovered together with CMS and Atlas. Uh, that we were targeting a, pre a precise uh, measurement of the of the BS oscillation. You see top right the, the results with the, the round two statistics. We were targeting time dependent CP violation BS, and this was actually uh, this recently uh, observed for the first time. And uh, we are starting to make precision measurement uh, we have of, of the CKM angle gamma. You see here the latest combination, but also there were result uh, sort of unexpected. So uh, we, we have hints, as you know, of lepton flavor universal violation in uh, KLL uh, B rarity case. Uh, the, the, charm, the whole field of the charm physics is being revived. And uh, we uh, 
last year we measured for the first time a difference in the mass between the D0 uh, eigenstates. And, and, uh, and uh, you see here uh, the, the plot of right. There, there have been a, a huge uh, series of exotic hadrons uh, discovered, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and so the spectroscopy is really uh, taking a, a, an important role in our, in our physics program. And finally, we also demonstrate the capability to perform electric precision measurement. This is our recent uh, measurement of the W mass on uh, part of, of uh, RAM2 data. So we are covering a wide spectrum of, uh, of uh, topics. And uh, of course, uh, all this is, is, is uh, we, we owe a big, very big thank to, to the machine performance, which were a, 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 a really wonderful. And uh, LEC is, uh, is delivering uh, uh, um, twice as much the luminosity, uh, the peak luminosity uh, uh, that uh, uh, was, was foreseen uh, uh, at the beginning. And in fact, I want to start uh, uh, from here. So uh, we, we need to, 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 to start from this point, that is that the physics program so far uh, for LCD has been limited by the detector and not by the machine. In fact, you see here on the, on the left, uh, uh, what uh, uh, is the peak luminosity uh, uh, of, of the Atlas and CMS span, which is the, uh, around 10 to uh, 34. Uh, actually, they run during 2018 at a peak luminosity of 2, 10 to 34 with pile up 40, while LSEB, Blue Points, uh, uh, is running at a, a constant luminosity of 4, 10 to 32, which is remarkable for us. It's twice as much the design volume but still is much less than, than the, uh, the, what the machine can do. And the reason is that uh, LCB is a, is, a, is a full spectrometer. So this is maximum we could stand with the, the detector we, we, we designed from, from the beginning. You see also how, how a typical fill uh, is, is, uh, is, 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 is configured. So with, with the uh, Atlas and CMS luminosity decaying with time and our luminosity being leveled, this is achieved by uh, separating uh, the beams uh, during uh, at the beginning and then uh, putting them uh, in a down collision uh, uh, during uh, during the film in such a way to keep uh, to compensate the decrease uh, in in the current and then once the beam are on uh, you start see a decrease uh, also for LCD. So uh, the, the so uh, as so the fact that uh, the, the detector was a limitation, of course, uh, means that there is a clear case uh, for an ambitious uh, plan of upgrades. And uh, so the first uh, upgrade uh, is at the starting line now. We installed a new detector. We'll comment in a moment on this. And uh, we are targeting uh, 2, 10 to 33 as a, uh, oper uh, operating uh, luminosity, again leveled. And uh, so a factor of five. And the goal is to integrate uh, 50 inverse phantom during run three and run four. You see here on the, on the right, the uh, in instant, uh, integrated luminosity plot. So uh, we could actually reach a bit better than this uh, at the end of run four, uh, since uh, the, the program, uh, the, the schedule has been updated uh, recently with the uh, run three and run four uh, getting four years instead of the standard three years. Per, per LSE uh, um, run. This phase, we think, is an, we, we, we'll have a, a LSE in healthy competition with a Bell 2 program at 15 versus Atabon. Then, for the uh, subsequent, at the end of round four, we foresee that uh, part of the detector will, will uh, start uh, uh, to be aged. So, we need to, in any case, to rebuild uh, the trackers, especially. So, this is the occasion to. Uh, make uh, the last jump in, in luminosity. And so we are proposing now a second upgrade targeting an extreme, so the, the extreme luminosity of 1.5 and 234 with the goal of integrating at least the three inverse, uh, 300 inverse phantom throughout the uh, ILUMI LSC uh, era. So that's, that's more or less uh, the, the proposal. So, uh, starting from, from the upgrade one, uh, as I said, uh, this implied a major upgrade of all subdetectors. Uh, only calorimeter set buon have been recycled, but with the, the new front-end electronics. So 
uh, starting from from the from the collision point, uh, a new silicon pixel vertex has been uh, is being installed actually. So the second half is being installed as we speak. Then uh, we have uh, an upstream uh, uh, tracker, uh, still the magnet made of uh, uh, silicon strips, and uh, this is complemented by a downstream tracker, uh, which is made of uh, uh, scintillating fibers. These, tra these trackers are uh, also completely completely new. The rich detector are still in the same position as they were uh, before, and uh, uh, the, the, the optics uh, of, the, of the rich one, the, the one closer closer to the interaction point, has been uh, uh, replaced uh, to stand the increased uh, occupancy condition. And photo detectors have been new photo de detectors have been installed for both uh, uh, so, uh, reaches. And then, uh, as said, the calorimeters and, and the muons have uh, new uh, front-end electronics. Basic concept of this upgrade is that uh, we, uh, we uh, are reading out the full detector at the um, crossing, bunch crossing rate of 40 megahertz, and we have a full software trigger. So, uh, why this? Because uh, at, at the, the main limitation for an increase of luminosity uh, was uh, for, at round two was the, was the, the level zero hardware trigger, uh, because uh, it, it has uh, a, a, a max bandwidth of uh, it, it had a max bandwidth of one megahertz, and the, the, the level zero hardware trigger was was made by cutting on uh, transverse energy of the calorimeter and. Uh, um, momentum, uh, transverse momentum of the muons. And uh, uh, of course, uh, you, you uh, by increasing the luminosity, you would then be forced to increase to match the calorimeter threshold, thus saturating the hadronic yields. You see here on the, on the plot uh, uh, shown, uh, the, the, this point shown on, the, on this plot, uh, you see in green uh, ammonic channels, uh, which uh, uh, scales linearly with luminosity, while uh, the hadronic uh, channel uh, saturate uh, quite uh, quite soon. So, for this reason, uh, as, as said, the level zero hardware trigger has been removed. So we read out the full detector at the bunch crossing rate, and we have a, a full software trigger based on track and vertex reconstruction. Uh, as I will comment, the first level it will be based on GPUs, and this will allow to uh, process all the data and uh, efficiently selecting uh, the signal. We uh, aim at uh, gaining a factor of two uh, in efficiency for hadronic finite state, which will allow us to target a factor of 10 increase in yields uh, for the hadronic channels, a factor of five comes from luminosity. While for muonic finite states, we, we do expect the factor of five increase due to the uh, luminosity. So uh, the data flow is shown here on the bottom. So we start from the uh, uh, 40 terabit coming from the uh, per second coming from the detector and out of 40 megahertz. Actually, the um, inelastic collision rate is, is a bit uh, lower than this. And, uh, and uh, then uh, this, this uh, first uh, uh, software trigger stage uh, um, reduced the, the, the output rate to one megahertz. This, this event go, uh, are, are stored on a buffer uh, disk and are then uh, uh, processed uh, asynchronously by a CPU farm. And this is the, the second stage of the software trigger. These also allow the, the farm to be used uh, uh, to, 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 to the HLT2 stage to be run also during a machine downtime, increasing the efficiency of the farm uh, usage. And uh, finally, we are going to store 10 gigabytes per second of, of, of data on tape. So uh, a bit uh, on, on the single, more, more on the signal sub detector. So the new vertex uh, uh, the title will be will be made on on uh, uh, of, of silicon pixel 55 uh, times 55 microns squared and uh, basic feature is that the sensor are now getting closer to the beam line uh, the, the, the closest position will be five uh, millimeters and there is also uh, reduced material before the measure the first and second measure point and this will allow to, to, to improve, uh, this is uh, from simulation, the uh, impact parameter um, resolution. You see the, the, the red 
uh, expectation for for run three as compared to to, to run one and run two. You see here the uh, on the right uh, a, a, a sketch of the of the detector in its closed position. The uh, modules will be retracted, are installed in the uh, in the in the um, secondary vacuum of the, of the of the uh, machine, and they are retracted from the beam once the uh, during injection. And you see uh, the, the on the bottom right uh, photo the, the the velo half being installed in his in his alcove. The tracking detector, as said, are an upstream tracker and a sci-fi downstream the magnet. And the upstream tracker is made of four planes uh, of silicon strips with finer segmentation with respect to to the uh, previous previous version. The role of this UT upstream tracker will be essentially to provide a fast uh, determination of the of the transverse momentum uh, to uh, improve the, the the extrapolation to the downstream detector, thus reducing the ghost track and uh, probability and uh, and uh, improving the trigger bandwidth. And also, there is there is the the the, the point of increased acceptance for uh, long lived uh, particles such as Keshot and Wanda. Uh, the the um, a comment, uh, the UT detector is still not ready for installation, will be sold at the end of, at the end of the year. And this uh, is not a huge, uh, huge uh, uh, problem for this first commissioning here, will uh, of course decrease the, the bandwidth uh, uh, of, of the trigger, but will not prevent a full commissioning uh, of, of the detector with, uh, uh, with the good possibility of, of uh, first uh, early physics uh, analysis. The downstream tracker is made of 12 uh, planes of scintillating fiber. This is a huge detector. Uh, each of these planes is uh, almost uh, 30 uh, square meters uh, and, and the fibers are uh, 2.5 two meters length and uh, 250 microns in diameter. And uh, these will stand the increase of the occupancy uh, of, of the uh, upgraded uh, data taking. So the uh, PID detectors uh, uh, will need to keep the, the same performance uh, as we had during round two. Uh, this is an essential ingredient to be uh, the reliever uh, the physics uh, program. You see what the separation was in, rich, uh, in our rich system uh, during uh, run two, uh, and uh, the, the main characteristics uh, that have been implemented during the, the, this upgrade are that uh, new mirrors uh, have been installed with the, uh, in the rich one with uh, increasing the, the focal length to help the occupancy, and the photo detectors have been replaced. Now we'll have multi anode photo multipliers with increased granularity of three and six millimeters, depending on, of, of the region and uh, which are able to read out the, the full detector 40 megahertz. You see here uh, on, on bottom left, the, the, the multi anode for the multi is installed in the focal plane of the rich one, upper side, and the first rings observed in rich two during a beam test of the LAC uh, last October. And finally, a comment on the Kalo and the Muon. Uh, both uh, detectors can be kept uh, since they can stand the increased uh, luminosity of, of run three, but the, the, the front end the electronics have been updated to read out the full detectors at, at 40 megahertz. Uh, we can also expect improvements uh, uh, on these, uh, on the, on the, elect on the, the Kalo and the Muon uh, performance uh, and especially due to a reduced PT threshold on electrons after removal of the hardware level zero. And uh, there, there are uh, improved Muon software selection to be applied directly at the, the software uh, uh, trigger and, and also uh, other improvements in the Muon, uh, in the electron PID, which are being worked out to compensate the occupancy increase. But I will comment this uh, uh, later. So, a comment on, on, on the software trigger, since, since this is a huge uh, uh, challenge, uh, this is the first time a full software trigger has been implemented at another machine. As said, there are 30 megas of inelastic collision, which need to be reduced to one megas uh, at the HT1 level by preserving, uh, by keeping an high efficiency on, on the signals uh, of relevance for us. And this will be performed at HLT1 
by essentially making the full tracking and vertex reconstruction and uh, the moon identification, of course. This will run on GPUs. You see on the top right what are the performance that have been achieved on, on the on uh, several uh, cards uh, and and uh, we we uh, the, the performance as such that we can process the input rate with the, by using a, a couple of hundred uh, uh, cards uh, you see that each card can process 150 the best can process 150 kilos of, of data the choice in terms of price performance has been on this uh, model a 5000 and so uh, we we have room in our servers to expand the system up to 500 cards so we can during run 3 port more uh, reconstruction selection functionalities into HT1 thus uh, improving the physics yield so and we will do this adiabatically one, once the, the 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 software is is in place the uh, reconstruction uh, is, is essentially ready and performance are very similar to what uh, we get on CPU. You, we, you see here, bottom right, an example for long track uh, uh, reconstruction, blue points uh, GPU based versus black points CPU based. And you see essentially we have very similar performance. The uh, output of the HLT1 will be processed by uh, a, 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 the, the CPU uh, farm. Uh, we have a few thousand nodes available, which uh, uh, will need to, to process the one megahertz rate. And the output of data is divided between uh, full uh, uh, so data for which the full information is, is preserved and uh, the one uh, in substantial part of, of the events for which we preserve only the, the trigger the trigger candidates this is these are this is called turbo stream and and then a, a stream which uh, is devoted to calibration events for which we need the full information of the detector stored okay and and as promised they have a comments on moon and electron performance so you see the right improvements in the uh, high level uh, um, moon identification algorithms which has been achieved and we can be now are now implemented directly at the uh, trigger selection so we you see here the pion rejection as a function of the moon efficiency in a certain kinematic beam and uh, and uh, you see in black what we uh, had run to as compared with the new algorithm and so we can now apply this directly at the gt1 since these are fast algorithms and for the electron reconstruction uh, of course this is more difficult due to bram stralung and you see here in in on the bottom right uh, uh, the performance of the of the um, tracking reconstruction and black uh, non electron tracks as compared with the electrons and you see a moderate loss of efficiency and and but as said we do expect the improvement here due to the removal of the uh, trigger uh, threshold the, the actual threshold as uh, for as an example in 2018 we had 2.5 gv applied to electrons versus 1.8 applied to muons so this will improve and also we are improving on the bid algorithms uh, the calorimeter uh, level so now I will cover a bit what are the physics expectation uh, for, for, uh, for the fixed performance expectation during uh, the, the next upgrades. So as said, we'll have two phases. One is the upgrade one, which is run three and run four of the, of the uh, um, LAC, uh, during which we do expect uh, uh, to integrate up to 23 and 50 respectively, maybe a bit more. And then uh, we, we, there is a third, a third uh, so the second target is the upgrade two, which is uh, with a target of at least two, 300 investment about at the end of run six. And you see here in this table, uh, the, uh, what we estimate for, the, uh, for some key observables, not all of them in flavor physics. And I will cover a few of these uh, uh, in a bit more detail in the next uh, slides. A consideration to be made is that even at the end of the upgrade one, that is at the end of round four, we still do not expect to saturate the precision, which will keep uh, scaling down as the 
luminosity increase. So we really think that the, 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 we can uh, fully realize the potential of the mas this machine by making a, a further step in luminosity at the end of round four. Um, um, a point also to be underlined, as said at the beginning, LSEB demonstrated in these years to be a general purpose detector in the forward region. So we will keep pursuing the, this ambitious program and covering all the various uh, uh, aspects that we, we uh, uh, covered so far, namely spectroscopy, electroweak precision, dark sector, and the ions and fixed target. So, um, but I will not discuss in this, uh, in this talk. Okay. I will start from, from the unitary triangle, of course. Uh, I will not make a long story here. This was uh, covered uh, very well in, in during this, uh, this uh, uh, by, the, by the previous speakers. So of, of course, uh, we do expect uh, to contribute a lot to the, to the precision test of the unitary triangle, especially by measuring uh, the, the phases, sun uh, to beta and, and gamma. You see here what is uh, the expectation. Okay, more or less, uh, this is a plot uh, on the top left uh, prepared uh, when we prepared the, the physics case documents. So a couple of, it's, it's a few years old. But then there is the expectation at the end of run three, top right and bottom right, the expectation at the end of upgrade two. So we really aim at an unprecedented accuracy on the, on the phases. Uh, and uh, this will allow really to constrain very much uh, the uh, direct to indirect determination of the apex of this triangle. Of course, uh, uh, while waiting uh, for contribution from uh, other experiences, Bale two especially, and uh, also uh, counting on, on, uh, on improvements from, from theory, from the lattice. And the comment on the, on the gamma, especially. So the, the, as you know, the present achievement with nine inverse femta is at the moment four degrees. And uh, we still have to include more, more channels. So we expect to slightly improve this at uh, the end of, of the, the run two analysis. Uh, and this is an excellent agreement with the indirect determination, but still uh, with a larger error. Many different decay modes are used, so there's and, and most more all of them are dominated by statistics. So we, we expect to scale with the with the statistics, and and uh, the combined uncertainty will reach 1.5 degrees uh, uh, at the end of run three, and will target point less than one uh, half degree uh, by the end of of the upgrade two. And one, one example which is interesting is the uh, best single result, which comes from, uh, from the uh, D0 DK to Keshore pi, uh, pi Pi, which has been recently published. This is a nice example of, of a synergy between a energy physics experiments, since uh, we, of course, measure the B uh, DKs to DK as uh, DK on, but uh, this, this is then. Uh, uh, um, reconstructing the Dalit's plane of, of the DDK and uh, with the, an unbinned uh, um, with the uh, with the binned analysis and the and the CP asymmetry is is in fact measuring the bins of the D phase space, uh, so providing a modern independent approach for this measurement. But of course, uh, to extract gamma, we you need the, the, the strong phases of the DDK over the Dalit's plane. This comes from Clio C and Best three. And in fact, the, the, uh, one of the, the main uh, um, step of this analysis has been the reduction of the, the contribution from, of the, due to the, these strong phases from four degrees down to one degree, thanks to the best three uh, um, measurement of the strong phases. And the overall error is now at the level of five degrees. So this is a very promising uh, uh, channel also for the future. And in fact, you see here in bottom right what we do expect. And essentially, we, we, we think that uh, the, 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 the present accuracy in strong phases is still, uh, still appropriate uh, up to the uh, round three and possibly, uh, possibly round four. But uh, then uh, to, to, to 
go even further in precision, we, we need an improvement in this, in this information. And uh, I understand this will come already with the new samples available, which will be available uh, at the BIS3 uh, experiment. Then there is, of course, the uh, BS time dependent CP violation measurement, that is the measurement of phi s, which is the uh, BS ana analog of uh, jet cycle short. And uh, this is very well known uh, in the standard model. Uh, the, 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 the size of this angle is expected to be around uh, 40 uh, milliradians. This is a measurement which is, again, another um, gives another nice example of synergy between experiment. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, there is uh, the competition, but the collaboration between uh, LACD, ATAS, and CMS. ATAS and CMS has also a very nice sensitivity uh, in flavor measure with Daimon in the final states uh, and, and uh, uh, such as uh, phi s through BS jet sci phi. The combined measurement is gives now a precision of 20 milliradians uh, in a nice agreement with the standard model. And we start approaching a sensitivity to observe a non zero value, which will hopefully do during uh, run three. Also, interesting is that when combining different experiments, this is another peculiarity of precision physics. You often find disagreements and systematics to be better understood. This is the case for gamma S and delta gamma S for this channel that and there is a tension presently between the various measurements, which needs to be clarified in the future. And this is a, a prospect uh, uh, as, as uh, uh, expected uh, in LACD in various channels. And uh, you see that uh, for the uh, CC bar S uh, black points, we do expect to really approach at the end of the upgrade to the standard model uh, error, which is uh, one to million radians. But also there is the possibility with, with, the, with the, the upgrade to, to make the measurement uh, via loop modes like BS55, BS K star K star, which will be also crucial to compare and constrain better new physics. Bottom left, you see, our, uh, you see a, a, an extrapolation, simulation extrapolation of BS jet sci-fi at upgrade two, and you see that we will hopefully uh, be in the position to see a nice uh, CP uh, violation oscillation. As uh, said at the beginning, and also as covered by Guy in his lectures, CP, uh, the, the charm physics uh, has been revived a lot, uh, thanks to the unprecedented statistics which are available uh, in our data samples. And uh, uh, the first step uh, towards the, 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 the possibility to, to, to see the CP violation in charm mixing is, is, is a precise measurement of the, uh, uh, sorry, yes, it's a precise measurement of the mixing parameter that are X and uh, Y, the mass and the lifetime differences between the mass eigenstates. And uh, uh, using the 30 million of the zero Keshore Phi Phi, we recently observed such a mass difference. And, uh, and the, the uh, lifetime difference is being very precisely measured using uh, 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 two body uh, finance states, for which also we have uh, unprecedented statistics. And in fact, this is the, the main, the key point to target the measurement of CP violation in the, in the mixing. And uh, so we have a, a, a real huge cross section for, for charm decays and acceptance of, of the detector. And uh, we implemented this, the concept of, of selecting uh, offline quality uh, reconstructed events in the trigger persisting only in the candidates to save uh, uh, storage uh, boundary. So this really allows to, to accumulate uh, such uh, huge uh, the charm uh, samples. And, and these samples are very clean, as you see here on the right. And this is essentially due to the design, the boost of, of the uh, uh, particles uh, in, in, the, in, in our environment and, and the very um, the, the very good resolution of the vertex, uh, vertex detector. And uh, 
we can expect that the upgrade two will be the, the only planned facility with realistic possibility to observe uh, the CP violation chart mixing. You have here an extrapolation of the, of the uh, expected performance in terms of Q over P and, uh, and, uh, and, and phase with uh, the, the parameters of the CP violation in the mixing. And you see the present situation uh, as compared with no CP violation, this is the black point and what we could reach. Uh, at uh, uh, 300 uh, inverse phantomer uh, with the center on the present uh, uh, values. So uh, we really can target uh, a, a, an extremely high sensitivity on, on this. So now moving uh, uh, to the rare decays. Uh, so um, as, as you know, uh, the SMU has been uh, from the beginning a flagship measurement. Uh, this is uh, uh, very precisely known in the standard model. We recently published the, the final result of run two data with the, achieving a, a rich a 15 accuracy on this on the uh, BS uh, branching fraction. And, um, and again, here there is a nice, uh, uh, nice uh, collaboration between the LSE experiment. You see here, top, uh, uh, the bottom right, the combination of the three experiment uh, with partial uh, run two statistics. So the, the, the final result of LSB is not yet included. And uh, uh, there is a, 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 a diff, um, discrepancy within the discrepancy, I mean, the, the, the compatibility with the standard model at the level of two sigma. So this is something to be followed up. And the very uh, interesting point is that the final uncertainty, which is expected uh, with full run two from all experiment is uh, start to be below 10%. So, the era of precision measurement in this field has started. This is very, very interesting. And uh, the key ingredients for success in this field are, I mean, uh, are uh, an example, uh, really works at, as a working example for, for the, the LACB design. So uh, the, we, we have a large, very large cross section and an efficient moon trigger and a large boost as said before, which allow to really separate the uh, prompt and, and combinatorial background from the signal. And you see here the prompt daimuon uh, si uh, signal that we see in our experiment. And you really need to scale down the background by four or five order of magnitudes to unveil the, the rare uh, decay. And then, uh, of course, the, the excellent PID performance to, to, to fight against uh, hadron to muon uh, is ID. All of these characteristics will be kept. Uh, at run three and beyond. So the design of the, the detector is, is, is the same as before. And the statistical expression that we could target on the branch infraction of BS is 7% after run three and it will become 2% uh, at the grade two. And systematics will be dominated by the adronization factors. So uh, a, a last comment on the role of this, uh, of this branch infraction. So I think that there are two points to be underlined. The first is that uh, the, 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 branching, the, the branch infraction will help in constraint uh, the uh, Wilson coefficient C10 in global fits with other B2SLL observables since it, it, and, it, and this is a very important independent constraint with the very, um, um, so in, when, where the, the, the um, theoretical uncertainty is fully under control. So this, is, this will be very useful. And then uh, the possibility to in, still improve in constraining the uh, supersymmetric scenarios. Uh, and uh, you see an example on how this works in tangent beta and uh, X mass uh, uh, plane. Uh, with present accuracy and the, the green region is the allowed region and what will become at the end of round four. And also the lifetime, effective lifetime measure will help in uh, uh, disentangle ambiguities in the, in the, in, in, in the uh, covered space. Uh, and uh, as you see uh, shown on the right. And Second topic on rare decays is, of course, the, the BSLL uh, result. And you see here, uh, summarized uh, in one slide, the present situation. We have the lepton fair universality ratio, that is the ratio of these uh, channels, B2SLL channels with 
B0 or uh, lambda B or B plus uh, decaying with the, with the K star and, and uh, lambda or, or, or um, final state. And uh, uh, these are essentially do not have limitation from theory. And uh, you see here, what are the present achievement from uh, uh, by us? And as compared with the, with the standard model expectation, which are essentially one. And, uh, and on the right, uh, you see uh, the, the other results, which are essentially the, the, the branching fractions and uh, uh, angular analysis. And uh, uh, there is a coherent uh, picture of, of discrepancy with respect to the standard model, which however need more data to be fully clarified. In the case of the branching fraction and angular observable, of course, there are uh, uh, theoretical uncertainty which uh, come into, into play. So uh, starting from the left of universality ratio, uh, the expectation and, 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 and namely on the most precise observer, which is the B plus K plus uh, lepton lepton, uh, the expectation of this observer is to uh, reach uh, a, an uncertainty at the level of 2.5% uh, uh, at the end of round three and going below 1% at the end of grade two. But what I want to underline is that uh, uh, we will benefit a lot uh, uh, from the statistics, uh, increasing the statistics also in decreasing the systematic. As an example, the present uh, RK analysis on the full statistics uh, have uh, 1.6 thousand signal events, but these are divided in four periods and three uh, trigger beans, uh, and uh, it, each period is, has its own uh, efficiency correction. And uh, while, while in run three analysis, we'll collect the same statistics in one year only, and the trigger will be also very much simplified due to the removal of the hardware trigger. So you can understand very well that this will also bring a much better uh, systematic uh, uh, understanding. We'll also, uh, in, the, in the future, we'll increase, increase the statistics, will benefit of uh, large sig the signal yields in all of the channel and multiple Q square beans. So we really will, will be able to have a much uh, better picture on, on this, uh, this topic. And of course, we are uh, eagerly waiting uh, inputs from other experiments, especially uh, Bell 2, which is fundamental for this, uh, for this uh, field. And then, uh, of course, we will keep uh, uh, measuring the, the angular uh, observables and the branching fractions. Here, the, of course, the, 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 the important, uh, I mean, the, the observer which is, has been most debated is the uh, P5 prime, which is one of the observers with reduced hadronic uncertainties. And the result on the partial statistics of run two as a uh, three sigma discrepancy with the, respect to the standard model expectation in the central Q square bin, which, however, comes with the non trivial uh, theoretical uncertainty due to the charm loop contributions. Here, the statistics can help a lot. You see a bottom, bottom uh, right, the uh, expectation of the end of round three, and especially uh, since uh, we can we, we, uh, be able to fit uh, some of the uh, contribution close to the resonant uh, regions directly from data, thus reducing the systematic uncertainty. And the other, another important cross-check will be also to fit the Wilson coefficients of fashion Q square to disentangle genuine new physics contribution, which need to be flat as a fashion K square with respect to possible uh, theoretical um, uncertainties, which can have a trend while approaching the, the CC bar uh, resonances. And uh, to close this uh, topic, uh, the global sensitivity on BSL BSLL can be uh, shown here. Uh, and this uh, is a fit uh, on the difference between uh, a muon and, uh, and uh, electron uh, width so coefficients. So the width so coefficients are fit separately for the, for the different uh, flare, uh, leptons. And, uh, and uh, um, all the um, lepton, both lepton flavor universality observable and angular observable goes into this, uh, this uh, extrapolation. And you can see here that uh, we will be able to distinguish between different scenarios, standard model, which is the blue point. The empty ellipse are the expectations 
at the end of round three and the shaded the expectation at the end of RBA2. And this will, the standard model expectation will be compared with what you could have with the axial vector, new physics structure, or a full vector, new physics structure. So really the, the large statistic will be, will enable a, a discrimination between different uh, uh, scenarios. Final word on the lepton flavor universality is, uh, is, is um, on the, uh, um, on the B2C 3D case, and that is constructing the ratio of uh, B2D tau to B2D uh, mu D case. And uh, this is a three level process. So, uh, the, and the, the new physics capping will be preferentially cap uh, via the third generation for the tau's. And uh, this is this also a very well predicted in the standard model and experiments starting from Babar and Bell. Uh, see a global uh, um, discrepancy with respect to the standard at a level of slightly more than three sigma. Uh, of course, there is could be a connection with the BSLL anomalies. So this this topic is quite uh, uh, under the spotlight. The, the present moment uh, we got result on this uh, on run two run one data only. And uh, especially on, on the D star uh, uh, final state, uh, we're using both uh, muonic and uh, uh, tripion in the case of the, the tau. For us, these analyses are difficult. There are poor kinematic constraints, large backgrounds. We need to, to generate huge statistics from Monte Carlo. Of course, we can still profit from the uh, large boost and excellent vertexing capability. And, uh, uh, but uh, still uh, the analysis are, 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 are uh, in progress uh, because of these difficulties. And uh, we also measured for the first time uh, uh, Lambda C from Lambda BD case and uh, uh, the, the uh, J Psi from BCD case. Accuracy uh, is still poor. Um, so uh, we, uh, to conclude here, we have excellent prospect uh, to uh, first of all, uh, repeat this analysis on round two data, improving precision and still develop, develop further this, this field uh, during uh, round three and with multiple, uh, multiple modes. Uh, but of course, we, 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 we think that also here the, the competition with Bell 2 will be very strong and, and in, the short, uh, in the short period. So I'm almost approaching the conclusion. Uh, as you have seen, uh, there is still a lot to do using the present data set uh, with many analyses also could benefit of additional person power. Uh, this year is crucial to commission the new detector and uh, to start a successful run three data taking. CNA rates will increase uh, during run three by a factor of five for moon final states and a factor of hopefully 10, close to 10 for adronic final states. New data are expected and are needed to clarify the picture of BCLL uh, decays. And a very important contribution is expected from, from uh, other experiment. And upgrade two, we think will fully realize uh, the potential of this machine, but to successfully exploit this physics case, we need to design and build a new detector, able to run at 10 times the pileup uh, uh, we uh, expect uh, at run three while keeping the same performances. And for this, uh, and we are developing this uh, concept uh, now. We recently delivered a, a, a framework TDR, which is available at this link. This has been re reviewed by the, uh, the um, LACC. And a uh, few words on this, uh, uh, the, the, the detector challenge is huge. So as said, the uh, pile up uh, is, uh, will become uh, about 40 in the, in the forward region. You see the, the bottom uh, uh, sketch uh, uh, with an event, uh, expect, uh, how is we do expect a collision uh, at, at uh, run three with pile up five, and what this will become at upgrade two with more around 2000 trucks uh, uh, in the very forward uh, region. So uh, a nightmare from an experimental point of view. We are at the moment considering the same spectrometer footprint at, as we had so far. In particular, we will keep the magnet, and but uh, we need innovative technologies for all detector components uh, with the key ingredients being granularity and uh, 
fast timing, especially with few tens of picoseconds needed at, in, in various uh, stages, and extreme radiation hardness. One of the key concepts we are uh, developing is the uh, tracking with timing uh, for the vertex detector. This is, you know, to one, one of the of the key ingredients is to keep a, 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 a very uh, good association between the secondary decay vertices and their uh, primary vertex of origin, and also preserving the decay time and impact parameter resolution. And you see on the bottom uh, left what we'll get with 40 interaction per band crossing around the, the primary um, of the, on the, around the luminous region. And so we think that uh, having the track time stamped with 20 picosecond resolution, the, the luminous region is uh, 200 picosecond wide, more or less. So we will be able to apply a 20 picosecond time windows and, and thus having a, a, a correct um, reconstruction of the primary vertices, correct association of the primary vertices. You see here the, uh, what you get quantitatively on the right uh, as a primary vertex efficiency with the present situation without timing in blue and compare with the upgrade two conditions in red with timing and without timing in purple. So we can, we will, we will be able to restore the primary vertex efficiency uh, uh, with, with, uh, with timing. So in general, the tracking detector will be uh, at the same component as, as we have now for with, with the variance on the upstream track and downstream track uh, represented by the usage of the uh, pixel silicon pixels instead of strips. And uh, this uh, will be a, a technology we'll, we'll are investigating for these are monolithic active pixel sensor. And uh, the, the pixel will be implemented also in the downstream tracker for the inner region to, to really uh, have uh, a, a, an occupancy which is uh, manageable, while scintillating fiber will be still implemented in the outer part. A nice addition of this design will be also to add uh, stations, uh, tracking station on the side of the magnet, which will allow to, in, to improve the momentum, the acceptance of low momentum uh, particles. The peak detectors will still uh, require increased uh, granularity and fast timing, and uh, the rich one and rich two will uh, use uh, uh, silicon photomultipliers as baseline uh, detector photodetector technology. We also are thinking to install a, a, a time of flight detector. Uh, made of a coarse plane uh, and to install it uh, uh, in front of the reach two to improve uh, performance on the on the low momentum PID. And we will need a completely new renewed uh, calorie electromagnetic calorimeter uh, able also to cope with the uh, very high radiation levels in the innermost region. For this, uh, we think to implement SPACAL with additional crystals and uh, which uh, and, and for the muons finally we plan to install a micro well for the innermost region, which have to stand very high radiation rate or rate of particles. And, and this is a, finally an example of the, the timing also applied to uh, particle ID detectors. You see here on the top right, what are the performance expected in reach? Uh, at uh, uh, run three, these are the blue points. This is the Pyomis ID as a function of the Keon ID. And what the situation will be at upgrade two luminosity with different uh, time gate uh, applied. And you see that applying a time gate at a level of 100 picoseconds or less, we will be able to restore the uh, performances. And this essentially comes via reduction of the combinatorial background. Uh, with, with the time time cut applied, and finally bottom bottom right is the performance of the of the calorimeter um, technology uh, for for, uh, for what concerns the time resolution uh, as measured in uh, um, test beams, and we are approaching uh, a performance which are uh, enough to guarantee what we need uh, at upgrade uh, to. 
a, a final comment on the on the timeline for this upgrade. So, uh, as as you can understand, uh, the next years will be uh, crucial for us uh, to commission the new detector and to start uh, deploying the, the physics program. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we think we have this this the next period of few years will be also devoted to, to perform detector R&D, to make the technology choices and optimize the detector design for upgrade two. And the target is to be ready at the beginning of LS3 uh, to, with, to prepare the TDRs uh, for, for the next phase in such a way then to have a, a comfortable period of six, seven years to, cost, to build the detector components in such a, and to be ready at the beginning of LS4 to install our detector without introducing major delays, further delays, I would say, in the LSC uh, program. Of course, the upgrade too needs a significant expansion of the collaboration if we want to keep uh, such an ambitious uh, program. So I'm um, uh, reached my conclusion. As you've seen, we have uh, interesting physics result coming out, and we have still many analysis to, to complete on our present data set. We are ready to start an exciting data taking period during run three and run four with a new detector. And we need to demonstrate we are able to stand the, the new conditions and then the new project is, is taking shape. And this also offer interesting possibility to develop uh, new technologies. So many thanks. Thank you, Matteo. Uh, the questions now, uh, uh, can you raise hands? Um, hi, uh, time to raise my hand. Uh, Amal, I, Amal, are you speaking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah go ahead. So, 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 Matthew, I had a couple of questions regarding yes. slide 30. Could you just go to that slide? 13? Uh, the three zero. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so one is this, uh, uh, the projection plot at the bottom. Yes. Is it simply obtained by uh, reducing the error by a certain margin, or is there something more to it? Compared no, no, this is uh, projected by statistics. So yes, yes. No, there is nothing particularly. Yes. And uh, second, yeah. And the second question is, I want to understand this remark of yours, uh, which said that uh, a genuine new physics contribution will need to be flat. So yes. what is the reason behind this? Uh, yes, essentially, this, this uh, I mean, uh, the, the, because I mean, the, the, the width of coefficients uh, are uh, uh, the, the, um, so the, the um, Lagrangian is expressed, uh, uh, the effective uh, uh, theory is expressed in terms of this, uh, this Lagrangian, uh, these uh, width of coefficients, uh, and uh, uh, which uh, uh, has to be invariant as a function of the Q square, uh, which uh, is, is, the, is the low energy. Uh, observe the, 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 the scale of the low energy uh, observables, which then allows to determine uh, the, the coefficient, which is then extrapolated at the energy. So this is invariant as a function of Q square. So uh, all measurement needs to bring the same uh, uh, short distance physics. That's the concept. So, so okay. maybe, maybe is this, so my, my uh, thinking was whether this result is valid. Uh, for the six dimensional new physics operators. I think maybe that's yes, yes. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yes, okay, uh, Jim, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Matteo, for this very nice talk. Um, I was just wondering about this, uh, the upgrade to ECAL. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, is there going to be significant improvement? potentially in pi zero reconstruction and things with this calorimeter or just the higher occupancy would just maintain the same sort of performance as, as the previous calorimeter? Uh, this is very uh, interesting question. So, uh, okay, uh, at the moment, uh, what, okay. So uh, first of all, a comment, so uh, for the technology, at the moment, uh, we plan uh, to uh, implement this uh, SPACAL uh, technology uh, uh, in the, with, with the art crystals uh, for the very innermost region, the one uh, with above 200 kilogray, and, uh, and uh, uh, with, this, with the lead and polystyrene 
of uh, uh, at the uh, second uh, 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 mid middle region and then shash lip models uh, on the on the uh, outer region the granularity of this will be increased and uh, we use tanks that in fact to bring down this the cell uh, size to 1.5 centimeters the resolution of this will be the same as, as now. What we have been demonstrated so far is shown here is the uh, capability on the, uh, on the K star gamma, so with an hard photon. And, uh, and uh, you see here on the left uh, that the timing really makes uh, uh, a huge difference in reducing background and uh, will allow us essentially to bring the performance back to what is the uh, run two expectation. You see here a curve uh, of the sensitivity and uh, as a function of the efficiency with different uh, kinematic cuts uh, and uh, run two is the uh, blue star and uh, uh, the red curve uh, is what we can get with the, uh, the present granularity and uh, the, uh, the uh, timing. So now we have similar uh, plots uh, for uh, pi zero as well, pi plus, pi minus, pi zero, for example. What I can say is that with the present, uh, so for this design, we are now um, having a, a baseline granularity with 30,000 uh, cells, uh, that is uh, uh, 15,000 cells, sorry, with double readouts, so 30,000 channels. And uh, uh, this seems uh, still a bit coarse for, for recovering fully the, uh, the performance uh, with the uh, pi zero final state. But uh, I think uh, we need uh, to run uh, a, a full, uh, full uh, uh, optimization exercise to, to get back to, to, to this, uh, essentially. Uh, another ingredient which is uh, uh, of, of uh, basic importance is the a projected performance on the electrons, which need to be guaranteed. And again, here we are close to, to the, to the um, run two performance, but not yet there. So I think uh, there is this, we need to, to optimize the granularity to, to improve on pi zero. Yes. Still. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh... Any other questions? No. Uh, okay, Jim, uh, thank you, Matteo. I thank just you. hand it over to Jim.